Good morning, everybody. The kids and I are getting ready for the day. Um, I have gotten dressed and all the fun things for the day, but the kids right now are busy making their beds because they're excited to pick something from the prize box. We have been doing our chore charts and they've been doing a lot better. Lincoln, however, though, is still asleep. I had three kids sleeping in my bed last night and Link was one of them. You guys hear Landon has his guitar lessons this morning with Mr. Ritchie. It sounds so good. I love it. Morning, Logan. Mommy, I love you. I love you too, every single day. Guess what did you pick for breakfast? I picked bread with some butter mm -hmm. and bananas. You sure did. That is probably one of your most favorite snacks, huh? Yeah. Yes. These kids decorated my fridge for me the other day with all of their different work. So cute. Chips for breakfast, huh? That's a pretty cool necklace. Where'd you get it? Rab. It's very cool. He got it from his dad, and dad got it from his last trip. Is that right? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. How was your trip with your brother? What was the best thing that you guys did? How about the food? Fine. You love food. Yes, you do. I do. <laughs> Here's all the lunches for the kids. It's gonna be a good day. Hey, I see somebody is awake over there. What are you guys playing? Superhero. Superhero. And this is our pet. Hey. Our pet. That's your Gaggy. what? Gaggy. Who's this, this is my pet lizard. His name is Gecky. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Gecky. He's the cutest he pet lizard I ever up. saw. And yeah. look at us. Who's that really in there? Can you guys guess? Lincoln. It's Lincoln. You girls, including your brother and your play is wonderful. For breakfast every morning, I give my kids three to four options. Typically, we offer Cheerios, which is the Walmart brand. Oatmeal squares, that's Lincoln's favorite. Or Kicks, Violet loves Kicks. Sometimes we'll cut up banana on top of our cereal with milk. And then brown sugar oatmeal is the other go-to that my kids love. Kids got to pick from the prize box this morning for doing all their chores. Huh, Logan? Bibs, what did you pick from the prize box? Stickers. Stickers. And my parents stopped by and they are going to help walk us to the school bus today. Okay, guys, let's start walking to the bus. Time to go. It's so nice living close to family. I have such a wonderful support system with these kids. And Logan's having some sensory issues going on with his shoes. Hey, can I help you? Can you say, will you please help me, Mom? Can you please help me with my shoes? Sure, it's because they're on the wrong feet. Now try. That's better. You got it? Okay, let's go. I love you guys. Have a good day at school. Bye. 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 It's like a Disneyland ride. They all wave. <laughs> Bye. All right, I just ran home from the bus stop getting my two minutes of exercise in for the day. But I was gonna show you guys, the kids have been really proud because they've been learning how to make their own beds. So this is Violet's bed. Ooh, I'm out of breath. And she is so proud of how far she's come in making her bed. And then Lily's bed, these girls are making a ton of progress in the morning. With healthy habits, there's still some progress that needs to be done with making this bed, but I'm just really proud that they are learning some life skills. And then Logan this morning did get up and make his bed. So this is his, his very best version job of making of the bed. His, and Lincoln woke up late, so he wasn't able to make his bed. So yeah, the kids are making a ton of progress, getting into the hang of back to school, getting their chores done. But it is a process with quintuplets. And each household does things different when it comes to building healthy habits for their family. And so transitioning from one week on, one week off with both household, it is a little bit more work to teach and instill chores. Um, and tour charts with my kids. But it usually takes us a good 24 hours to reset of like, okay, this is mom's house and this is how we do things here. And so I am proud of the kids though. They've made a ton of progress and hopefully it continues and they just keep building these really great life skills.
Hey guys, I am at Star Nursery Gardening Center and this is my most favorite place to come for gardening products and flowers. They just have beautiful things and great quality. But I have loved coming to Star Nursery since I was a child. I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada and I have fond memories of coming to the Star Nursery Gardening Center there and my parents just pushing us around in the little red wagon carts and gathering flowers to help landscape. So that's something fun that I do every year with the kids. And um, the kids are actually with their dad right now so I'm going to be doing some fall porch decorating all by myself and I'm quite excited. So come along and come shopping with me and let's go see what they have together. So when I garden and especially for potted plants, I typically go with Star Nursery's Dr. Q's potting soil because I find that it's just really aerated well and my plants have great drainage with this product. And it is a little bit more money than like a cheaper version of a potting soil, but my plants thrive with this and it'll take me all the way into spring before I switch over the potting soil. And then I typically add a little bit of fertilizer which I will show you guys here I've already put into my cart and this is Dr. Q's rose and flower food it is on sale right now um, I love this stuff typically I buy things at the end of the summer with clearance like at Walmart but I kind of miss that so let's get shopping and then I will show you some of the flowers that they do have today so this is a close-up of the stuff that I always add and I've done this for years and my plants just do really well and then I can also transplant them from pots into the spring once they've gotten just a little bit bigger I love this stuff one of my most favorite things to buy in the fall time is gardening mums and I used to think that these wouldn't grow back here in southern Utah but I have found that I can transfer these from my planter all the way into my garden and they come back year after year and the blooms and roots like are just great quality so they transplant really well but I love that you get a lot of bang for your buck so in a vlog I'm gonna show you just how big these are but typically when I purchase mums I try and find mums that haven't quite flowered yet just so they last me a little bit more into the October, November, and a little bit of that December season, which I love. And I typically like those like plum colors, violet, I don't know, pinky purpley tones for fall is how I typically do my front porch. Everybody's different, but those are some colors I do. This is more of like a maroon color, but they do have orange in stock as well as yellow. But I like, like I said, those pinks and plums. So I'm gonna see what I can find more on a budget here, but I love their selection today. So for me, I wouldn't purchase one like this just because it's already flowered. I would probably go with one that's like this so that the blooms are a little bit tighter when you first plant it so the roots can just grow deeper and get a little bit more well established but then when they actually flower with the fertilizer it just gets beautiful so this is more of the colors that i like in the fall time um, but like i said i typically find some plants that haven't quite bloomed yet just so they can establish a better root system with the fertilizer i'm really loving these mums right here that are almost like a blush and peach tone color these might be really pretty on my fall porch and they're a little over five dollars so they're not the 25 dollar price range just a little bit more affordable so I am going to just kind of creatively see what I can put together but I'm hoping to take the items that I plant plant them this fall and then transition them into my actual garden come springtime and then every year just kind of rotate plants in and out but it'll be nice to have them on a porch because then I can care for them a little bit more by adding fish fertilizer um, when I water them and um, just to help them establish a better root system these would be a really great great choice um, for just a little under six dollars because in comparison in to these it's just a little bit more height for the same price so I may go with something more like this or maybe I'll add a little bit of both I think those are just beautiful together these sunflowers are on sale and they're really pretty um, some of them look a little bit underwatered but some of them are just beautiful especially for fall these would be really pretty in a planter so I might pick that these brown-eyed girl sunflowers are so gorgeous. I might put those in my planters as well, but I think I'm gonna go with more of those purpley pinky tones so that it can transition into winter a little bit better, but just so pretty. So typically when I'm planting flowers in my flower pots, I go for something called Thriller, Spiller, and Filler. So I'm shopping for those three items. So my Thriller is my most favorite item that I'm adding to the planter. The Spiller is something just kind of like spills over the side. And then the Filler just takes up extra space. And typically I pick something like Dusty Miller or like some grass just for a little bit of height. And I can get those for pretty inexpensive and then just reuse those year after year and it just kind of stays in that spot and then I can transfer that to my garden and it transplants really well and does really well here in southern Utah so I'm gonna go find thriller spiller and filler 
so they do have kale if you've ever planted kale in your garden it's a pretty good deal and this is something that looks gorgeous paired with other items and it'll last me through the winter and come january february still just looks gorgeous and i love the purple tones in here as well as the different shades of green so i'm gonna pick this cabbage and it's actually like massive they do have different types of decorative cabbage and kale i was calling it kale before it's actually cabbage but i like the red because it has a little bit more of that purple tone in it that i think is just so pretty and classy okay the next item that i'm gonna pick that is going to add height to my pots as well as just a little bit of interest and it's quite inexpensive is a filler item and this is just some red fountain grass and i really love kind of this like feathery quality that it has here just adds a little bit more interest so it's not just all the same height in a planter and this was i think like three dollars and 88 cents which is perfect for a filler item this is the dusty miller that i like to purchase in packs of six because it's quite inexpensive and these plants are huge within a year's time and you just get a lot of bang for your buck typically they have more in stock um this was the last one that they had but i think i'm going to purchase this because it adds just that sagey tone that i love so much in a planter and these will get pretty big like about that tall as a filler so i'm going to purchase that as well i did decide to go with those gardening mums because for five dollars and 88 cents i think you get a lot of bang for your buck so this is kind of what i'm going for i think it is going to be beautiful Okay, so the last item I am going to add to this planter is something called lamb's ear. And I love how sensory friendly this is. And when you touch the leaves, it really does feel like a lamb's ear. And I think my kids especially are going to love touching it when they walk by. I really want um, that sensory experience for my kids in the garden because I want them to just love and feel the joy of gardening and being outside. So I'm going to purchase that and that's going to be for one planter. And then I'm going to see what I can find for the other planter that's going to be right next to it. And then I'm gonna go pick up a couple of pumpkins at the store and then I'm gonna head home and do some gardening. This last item I forgot to mention is called asparagus fern. And this adds just a little bit more texture interest and it does kind of have that trailing effect over the side of the planter. So I think we are done here and it's gonna turn out gorgeous.